Hey guys, Somebody's Gun here, back with some more informational content, and today we're going to talk about how to avoid getting lobby focused, as well as lobby manipulation and area control. We're going to start with the basics, and then we'll work our way up to really go through how you could use these topics to your advantage. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's start off by watching a team that is getting lobby sprayed. Now, it comes down to three simple reasons as to why they are getting lobby sprayed. First is going to be rotating late. Second is going to be appearing vulnerable. And then third is going to be line of sight from multiple teams. So we'll watch this from a couple different perspectives and see why exactly this is happening. So we see this team coming off a of Stark, and we can already see all of the builds out in front of them. There's tons of players that are going to be able to see them. They're not using hard mats, or at least Coop, who we're watching, is. Who Fishy is building a ton, but he is also weak himself. So one tag, and he's going to have his shield broken. The wood builds are going to be assigned to other players. These players that they're shooting at are not in a great position. And then the shield crack comes and the entire lobby either sees or hears that and knows that this is going to be a great opportunity. So these players do eventually wind up slowing it down, but not after building a ton. The late rotation is obvious, they're coming into the storm very late, and vulnerability is not necessarily known to other players until Coop gets cracked. One thing that is obvious is the line of sight. We can see how many different teams are looking at these two coming out of storm. So let's hold on, stop this, see and look. Just look at all of these teams that are now looking at these two, and line of sight is so huge. If you can break the line of sight, that can prevent you from getting sprayed, but when there's this many teams looking at you, there is literally nothing you can do to prevent yourself from getting lobby sprayed like this. I showed you an example of what not to do. So now let's look at a team that is starting to get sprayed by multiple other duos and uses natural cover, ducks under a hill, and breaks that line of sight to avoid them getting lobby sprayed. This is the key for what you guys need to do in order to avoid getting consistently focused. Now let's talk about lobby manipulation. This is typically going to be done by holding a higher point within an area with great vision surrounding you. So for this example, we're going to look at Miro and C sitting on top of ruins, holding players at the edge of zone, using the moat around ruins as a barrier and keeping players away from them. As we can see, there's three different teams that have been highlighted on the edge of zone. This is due to the pressure that Miro and Cease have put on them, and they can't rotate further. You would obviously want to rotate past this position, but because a team is holding you and manipulating your ability to move, they are forced to sit on the edge of zone. We can take a look at this from a different perspective using the map POV. This is going to show us that there is no one in the area surrounding ruins, obviously because it's water, but Cease and Miro have kept everyone off of that island. And not only that, they're going to hold every team on the west side to the edge of storm. So we can see this team on top of ruins has no teams nearby. And so this is their area of control. I'm going to highlight this. This is the area that they're able to influence due to their line of sight, which allows them to put pressure on different teams. We can see the two red arrows. Those are teams they've already forced into a poor position. They are on the edge of zone and now have to rotate even further. Now Miro and Cease will be able to put pressure on them and any other team within this yellow area can be forced to play differently if Miro and Cease choose to do so. Now we're going to look at a second example where instead of one player manipulating others and having an area of control, it's going to be a group of players manipulating the lobby. These are our manipulators. These are the teams that are on or near the edge of the zone that are going to force everyone coming out of Misty to pile up on top of one another. Now we can watch and see from an overhead point of view, the teams we just stated where the manipulators are going to hold everyone coming out of Misty. This zone is ultimately going to end right at the edge of Misty, and we'll see numerous players pile up right where that fresh brick cone is being built. So 
let's watch how this plays out and how this continues to play out throughout the entirety of this zone. This happens in almost every game, so understanding how build up, player build ups work, as well as using this manipulation to your advantage, is a key to being successful. One of the key advantages of pushing players into this build up is it forces conflict between the two. Likely those players will wind up fighting for space and with multiple teams watching, this is another example of how you get lobby sprayed. If you are left open or seen fighting another team on the edge of the zone, you will wind up getting sprayed because players want in on that action. But it also keeps players off of you and allows you to use your mobility more freely. Other key advantages are going to be storm surge tags and then possible eliminations as well. After zone is closed, we can see that there are six total teams within the highlighted green areas and then eight total teams within the red space. The red space is going to have a much harder time rotating and is going to be stuck fighting players for that space. The green area is much more free and open now has that ability to use their mobility or just simply rotate out. This is the advantage of using lobby manipulation. The final piece that I want to look at is how these two teams, Acorn Jock and ADN and Hardfine, hold the top of this mountain in order to force every team onto one side or the other. So we see these two hold their space. They're on the top of the mountain in a great position in zone. We can see them right here on top of the mountain. And then teams are clustered. So if we pause this, there's teams clustered here. And then they'll, they'll start to cluster here. We could watch this effect happen in real time as we zoom out. All of this is due to the pressure and the positioning from these teams up top. Now, a couple do wind up managing to sneak past them, but it's not just these two teams up top. Once one of the teams decides to position themselves on the left or right of this mountain, that is where everyone else will remain. Because of this, we get huge clusters on the right and left side of zone. We can see one right here and then another cluster right here, while the middle and highest point is relatively free. We only have about three different duos set here, while we can count numerous duos on the edges of the zone. And this is due to that buildup and the manipulation, the area control, and how different pieces of elevation and terrain can play in to your success as a Fortnite player. We can see this. They are continuing to put pressure on. They're owning the high ground. And just a great vision of how these zones play out and how the teams in good position can continue to affect those in the rest of the game. So now if we scroll ahead into how the rest of this game plays out, still this top of the mountain is the least congested point. The edges continue to remain super congested with multiple different players as they don't want to force themselves through the builds and the pressure of this team up on high ground. This is one of the most effective pieces to hold high ground through mid game and give yourself an opportunity. Obviously they got lucky with the zone continuing to pull up on top of this mountain, but if we just continue to watch, this is going to allow them to be super successful throughout this game. So not only were they able to get down without any issue, they are now going to be able to jump on top of other people's builds and avoid a super low layer. Again, this all comes from success early on. I'll just let this play out as I continue speaking here, but it all comes to early game positioning, how you force players to move, and then what you want to do when you get that positioning. This is moving super quickly, but I hope you guys did enjoy the video and learn something from it. Learned how to use your control, your space, your lobby manipulation, and either get someone focused or avoid being focused yourself. It's a huge piece of the game, and I think the top players understand it. I don't know if they've necessarily discussed it, but they understand how to put pressure 
and use space within zone to take over a game and really own a lobby or an area. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please go ahead, like, and subscribe to my channel. It's greatly appreciated. Tell your friends. Hopefully they learn something as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Somebody's Gun, and I'll see you guys next time.